Public speaking part one is the easiest part of the exam. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't start with some amazing answers. So in this video, we will have a look at four band eight model answers on the topic museums with the question, are museums popular in your country? At the end of the video, we will have a look at three different question types you have in speaking part one of the exam and which question type it was. Understanding the three different question types has helped all my students to better prepare and to get a better score. Before we have a look at the four different examples, let's first have a look at three different options you have on how you can use this video to improve your speaking. Option one, listen to the four answers that I'm going to give you. Stop and pause from time to time. Take some notes while you're stopping and pausing. Look at the example answers uh, below uh, the video. Look at some of the language and the grammar used in the examples. Try to use some of it for your own language. Create your own answer. And then finally, practice saying your own answer. Option two is go through the practice with me. Pause the video. Um, answer the question yourself. Um, record your answer so you compare you can compare your answer with my answers. Listen to many uh, to my answers and compare my answers with yours. And then look at the language and the differences. Improve uh, your answer using some ideas from my examples. And then say the answer again with uh, improved uh, language. And again, maybe compare the original with uh, the second version. Option three. Just watch the video and, and listen to my answer. Um, maybe still have a look at the, the language used below the video and treat it a bit more like a listening practice just to kind of have a relaxed uh, listening and listen to the language. Whatever decision you make, at least you're here practicing and that's what matters the most. So here is the question again. Are museums popular in your country? Now let's listen to the first answer. I don't really know. I haven't been to a museum since I was at school. Then we went to a couple of them a year. So I guess they are popular with schools, but I don't know if any adults go there. Maybe some old people who have a lot of free time and don't know what to do with it. Now the second answer. And don't forget to focus on the grammar and the vocabulary. It depends on what you call popular. Not as popular as football matches, I'd say as there are still many more people going to and watching football matches on TV than there are people visiting museums. But we have a few really interesting museums around the country and still many people visit them, I think. So I guess they're still kind of popular. And now the third example. If you really like the video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps. For sure. Museums are pretty popular around here. People seem to really dig exploring art, history, and all that cool stuff. It's not uncommon to see folks spending their weekends checking out different exhibits or taking a stroll through the galleries. Plus, museums often have interesting events and activities going on, which adds to their appeal. So yeah, I'd say they're definitely a hit in our country. And now the fourth and final example. Well, to be honest, Museums aren't always the go-to choices for everyone here. One reason could be that some people find them a bit pricey, especially if they have a lot of exhibits or special collections. The entrance fee can add up, especially if you're going as a family or group. Plus, there might be other cheaper or even freer activities available that people prefer. So while some folks do enjoy visiting museums, it's not always the most popular option especially if costs is a factor. Just remember that uh, it's okay to be nervous at the beginning of the exam. It's normal. The examiners know that the exam is important for you. And at the beginning of the exam, they take it easy. Um, just don't memorize uh, the answers to the questions. This will really give you a bad score. The examiners are trained to recognize memorized examples. Just use the language to practice. Um, and so to improve your grammar, your vocabulary, and by practicing, you will also improve your fluency and your pronunciation. 
Like I promised in speaking part one, you have three types of questions. First uh, question type one, what do you do in your free time? Do you enjoy reading? What was your worst subject at school? What do you like about your job? Do you like the area where you live? These are all very personal questions um, and they're, they're rather easy ones to kind of get you to um, start uh, talking. Question type two, is it a large apartment house? Who do you live with? Are there many rooms in your, ho in your home? What's your favorite room? Is it a quiet or noisy place to live? And so on. These are kind of follow-up questions on one question here, um, where do you live? And there are some other questions to follow up to go a little bit deeper into um, the conversation and ask you a bit more detailed questions. Question type three, is your country popular with tourists? Is it bad to use the internet too much? What is a traditional meal in your country? What types of films are popular in your country? Do you think work-life balance is important? And so on. These type of questions are very similar to um, IELTS uh, part three of the exam. They're a bit more general questions. They're still asking for your opinion, but rather not your personal uh, experience, like, do you like reading? Um, we're talking about, do people in your country like reading? So these are a bit more abstract and a bit more challenging. So here the examiner is trying to push you um, to use a bit higher and more complicated language. So here it's really important to kind of focus on and give some longer and more difficult answers. So which kind of question did we practice here? We practiced the third type of questions, the general ones. Are museums popular in your country? So focus on if you think many people go to museums or not. You connect it with your own experience and example, but you should focus on what you think most people do in your country. To expand your answer, you can talk about why is it popular or not popular in your country? What kind of things people do at museums or what other things they do instead of going to museums? and maybe related to a personal experience you had when you were going to a museum. I hope the practice was useful and I would say practice some more and good luck with your exam.